Hey everyone, today I want to give you an introduction to working with DAX. I've compiled a list of five things that I think every Power BI beginner should know if they want to master the DAX language. I'm going to share that list with you today, so let's get started in Power BI. If you're finding my channel for the first time, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with any new content that I release. But without further ado, let's get started with uh, tip number one on the list, which is the VAR statement. So to demonstrate the VAR statement, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create uh, some fake data. Maybe in this column, I'm just gonna say name, Victor, and I'm just gonna create one more column called last name, and then Valencia. I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, my DAX table. It's going to create my table over here. Okay, so I have DAX table. I'm going to right click and to give you a demonstration of the VAR statement. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click new measure. Now you can write DAX to create measures or to create new columns. In this particular case, I'm just going to work on a measure but I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift return and we're gonna go ahead and type in var. Now, var is how we declare our variables. I'm gonna create a variable called x and I'm gonna assign x equal to five and I'm gonna create a variable called y and I'm gonna assign y equal to six. Now, you can declare variables and they don't have to be numerical. I could also create a variable called var z, and I'm gonna assign this the value victor, which is a string. Remember, var is to declare and assign variables, which then brings us to uh, tip number two. Okay, tip number two is called the return statement, and it is how we tell DAX what value we want returned. Okay, the return statement is pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and add some blank lines by doing shift enter and you're going to type in return. Now what is it that you want DAX to return? Right now we have a list of three variables. I could return variable x, y, or z. I'm going to go ahead and just select x and I'm going to hit enter. And to make sure that this is returning x, which is equal to 5, I'm going to go and add a card into my visual here and I'm going to drag the measure into the fields and now we see that it returned 5. If I change my measure to return z, z should return victor so I'll go ahead and I'll hit enter and you can see that it returns victor and, and that's the return statement that is how you tell DAX what value you want returned. Okay tip number three is familiarizing yourself with DAX functions. Now, what exactly are DAX functions? So DAX functions are operators that can be combined to build formulas and expressions in Power BI. Now, we're not really gonna be able to go over all of the DAX functions because there are over 250 different functions. DAX allows us to work with our data in a variety of ways. So there are aggregate functions, that allows us to take our numbers and be able to calculate things like averages, counts, min and max. We can also work with dates. We can work with string and text values. We can work with financial data in the form of financial functions. And so the list goes on and on and on. We're not really gonna be able to cover a lot of the functions, but I just want you to be aware that this page exists here. I'll also post the link in the comments where if you have any question on what function is out there, what you can leverage and use, you can always come here and start to browse the different functions that are available. Uh, for our demo, we're just going to pick one function uh, to maybe work with. So if we go down and we find a math function, I'm going to go ahead and find the divide function. I can click on it and I can see that divide. It does exactly what you think it is. It performs division. Essentially what you do is you pass it a numerator, a denominator, some form of alternative result, which is the value returned when division by zero results in an error, or when not, when not provided, the default value is blank. 
So if there's an error in our divide function, it'll default to blank unless you tell it to pass something else. So let's go see the divide function in our DAX statement. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create another variable called div for divide. I'm going to set it equal to our divide function. You'll see here a quick summary, very similar to what we read. Uh, it's a safe divide function with the ability to handle divide by zero. So remember, we need a numerator. So for the numerator, we're going to go ahead and hit 10. For the denominator, 2. So we're doing 10 divided by 2. And if for some reason there was an error, I'm just going to have it return a blank, which is the default as well. And now I can go ahead and hit enter. And I've created my divide function and I've stored it in the variable div. Now all that's left is to tell the return statement to return div, which should be 10 divided by 2 or 5. And there we go. The answer is 5. Remember, I can always change the values inside of my function, 100 divided by 2, and we would get 50. That's a very brief intro into working with functions inside of DAX. Okay, so for tip number four, this is where we start to combine everything. So here we're gonna learn how to combine our variables along with some of the DAX functions. Combining our variables with our DAX functions is actually really easy. So remember, we have our divide function here where we passed it a numerator and a denominator. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap the numerator with one of our variables. Remember, we can't use a string inside of a divide function because this requires a number. So we're gonna pass it our variable y, which is equal to six. And for the denominator, we're gonna pass it the variable x, which is equal to uh, five. So we should get y divided by x or six divided by five. I can go ahead and hit enter and I get 1.2. Now, if I change 6 to be 60 and x to be 6, we should get 10. Hit enter, and there's 10. So now you see how we can start to combine our variables along with our functions. And if I wanted to take it one step further, I can create another variable, maybe called result, where I can take our variable y, and multiply it by our div function. Now our div function, remember, actually uses y to calculate the value because y is 60 in this case, it divides it by six, so we get 10. We then pass 10 into the result variable where we take 10 and multiply it by y, which is 60, to get 600. So in our return statement, I'm gonna go ahead and return the result which should be our 600. And so you can start to see how you can begin to chain variables along with functions, and then functions themselves, you can assign to variables and then use in other calculations or other functions. Okay, the last thing I wanna make you aware of in tip number five is understanding how to write comments in your code. Now, comments are not evaluated in your DAX statement, they're simply there for you to write notes or other tips about what it is that you're doing along the way in your DAX statement. Now, at first it might not seem relevant, but if you have a DAX statement that's 100 lines of code, hopefully not, but if you're working with something like that, it'd be nice to have some comments in there so that if someone else comes and looks at your code, they're able to follow what you're doing or at least understand it. So let me show you how to, how to build comments inside of your DAX. Creating comments is pretty straightforward. If you want to comment an individual line, for example, our variable z is used nowhere else in our function. Maybe I want to block it out for now. You just put two forward slashes. Now if I go to return the variable z and I hit enter, I'm going to get an error because the variable z does not exist. Right now it's just a comment. It's just a piece of string that isn't evaluated anywhere within our DAX function. But if I bring it back and I hit enter, now our variable z once again is equal to victor. So you can do 
the double lines to create a comment and maybe in this particular comment I want to highlight what this function is doing divide variables y by x right in case someone comes along and looks at my code they know what I'm doing in each section the other way that you can common things out is if you have a giant block of code and let's just say I had a hundred lines and I didn't want to comment each individual line out what you can do is you can do a forward slash and a star now you'll see that that'll comment everything out but I just want to comment these three lines so at the end of my block I'll do a star again and then close it with another forward slash so there you go those are my five beginner tips for working with DAX. If this video helped you, if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and catch me on the next video and I'll talk to you guys later.